hearty shalom to you. Jeffrey Seifier coming to you from a different place. Usually I do it from my study. It's a theological study um, in my home. But here I'm coming to you from my office at the police academy. Different set of diplomas back there. Some people wonder how is it you do both. It seems incongruous to be involved in law enforcement on the one end and uh, to be involved in the ministry on the other. But if you look at life as all about helping people, it works that way. Speaking of helping people, we're looking in Hebrews chapter 5. I want to look at 7 through 10 and uh, peer into the story of someone who came to help people, and that is the Lord himself. Uh, in verse 7, um, we hear about those who offer up prayers and pleas, and they are heard as a result of so doing. Um, that is to say, people petition the divine for redress for grievances, for help in time of need, and they get it. And that's not only true uh, for the Lord and for those first century people and for the author who wrote Hebrews. It's just as true for, for people like me and you. Some people wonder if there's any help in this world. Well, there is help in this world, and it's really out of this world. Uh, the good Lord has ways of turning around lives and circumstances, so don't give up. Sometimes we, uh, we find ourselves amidst the turbulence of trying times, and the Lord himself, in verse 8, the author tells us that he learned obedience through what he suffered. It's right there in the TLV and every other version for that matter. Uh, we don't like that. We live in a world today where uh, the religious, uh, the marketplace of religious ideas is populated with prosperity and, you know, all things good. And I certainly believe in a good God and all things good, but uh, we have to pay our dues. And uh, the Lord himself learned through the trying circumstances he found himself in. And he pressed through that with, with loud prayers, with tears, with a kind of dogged determination. You know, I have 30 years as a, as a seminary professor, a Bible college prof, and I would tell people, look, even if you don't like me or another professor, you can still learn from them. Uh, that is to say, you can find yourself struggling with someone or something, uh, but uh, just tarry on. Don't lose your composure. Don't give up the ghost. Stay in there because there's things to be learned. Uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will emerge and uh, that uh, there, there's lessons to be learned through life's sufferings. I know that because I've given myself over to the rigors of running and weightlifting and so forth, and, and I can assure you it exacts a toll. But you, you learn to get used to it. You, you, you lean in on it, and it becomes a way of life, and it's very transformative in nature. In any case, that there are certain benefits to be gleaned through struggle, and that's not only true in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense as well. Yeshua went through the cross, uh, and he became, in verse 9 in our passage, the source of salvation to all who obey him. A few things, that he himself is, in effect, the source of the healing, the wholeness, the health. That means you can find yourself amidst imperfect circumstances. You can find yourself amidst imperfect people. But if you link up to the divine, you can be linked up to the source of, of, of betterment, of wholeness. And all that's available to all, not just to some. It's not a Jew thing, it's a you thing. It's God so loved the world. Unfortunately, some of my Jewish friends just think it's all about the Jewish world. And uh, it's not all about the Jewish world. It's through the Jewish world to the larger world. Because at the end of the day, uh, God's plan in Genesis through Abraham in chapter 12 was that all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Uh, there's a salvation, there's a health, a healing, and a wholeness that's available to all. But note as well, it's all who obey him, not just who pay lip service to him. And obeying him means picking up that cross. You know, sometimes, as I'd said already in this segment, as elsewhere, that uh, there's an aversion to suffering, and a lot of religion just stays clear of it. But uh, uh, God works through it, he trains us up with it. And it's imperative that we obey him, uh, even amidst the turbulence of trying times. May it be that we are found obedient, imperfect as we are, myself foremost. I do not sit before you as something great. You know, I'm just a guy. And um, 
I thank God for God and the grace that's been shown me uh, through uh, salvation, through my wife, uh, through the various people, um, through just the ministerial world that I found myself in these years. I've experienced a lot of grace, and I'm glad to remind you of that because you and I need that. And we find grace with the Lord. He's a high priest. He's introduced as such. Now, in the TLV, we refer to Kohen Gadol. It's one of those stumbling words because English readers re read and go, well, what's that? You know, and then you, you throw back to the glossary, and it's high priest. Um, there are occasions where we want to not set up an obstacle course, but to confront readers with how Hebraic the Jesus story really is. And so to hark back to the title name for the ruler of the religion in the Older Testament, uh, the high priest Kohen Gadol reminds of that, that uh, Yeshua in effect is the Kohen Gadol. Um, that it's fascinating to me that the author uses uh, Jewish uh, language and image in order to convey the truth of who Yeshua is. And by the way, parenthetically, as I pivot away, uh, from this segment, uh, that is exactly the kind of thing we're looking to do in the TLV world to, to you know, resurrect this long-lost testimony of the Jewishness of the Jesus story. Well, blessings to you. Let's do this again, but we'll do it in a week. God bless. Ciao.